Maniac Cop 3. What's going on everyone? So I just got done watching Maniac Cop 3 yesterday. <laughs> Had some time to think about it and I went into this movie with the lowest expectations ever. Told that this was pretty bad. I forget who said it. But honestly, this is better than the original. That's right. Get at me. I said it. This movie was actually entertaining. Yes, it's not the best written movie. Larry Cohen once again writes this. Once again, William Lustig directs it. They're just not that good, but at least they're entertaining in some fashion. Some fashion or another. There's some good things to talk about, but let's just dive into it, shall we? Yes, let's get this over with. This is not a great series at all. I can see why they never made a fourth one, although there was talks at one point about five years or so of the Maniac Cop 4, but the guy who plays the Maniac Cop, Matt Quiddell, he died in 2015, so he ain't coming back. But this movie is once again about Matt Cordell, the dead cop who gets resurrected from the grave and he wants to take care and clear the name of this woman, this cop who gets framed, kind of like him. But that's a problem I have with this movie, is that he gets resurrected from this guy and it's never explained why. Why does this guy want him back? He comes back and then like this shit happens with this cop named Kate she gets wrongly convicted. She's put in a comatose state, so she can't defend herself. So then this guy, Maniac Cop, comes and this is his new motive. And we'll get, yeah, let's get into it. It just makes no sense. But there are a few good things about this. I like Robert Dahl. Is that his name? The actor from Die Hard, Goonies. He was in the second one. Now he's back. And in this one, he has a love interest. And the chick from the second movie, she's not back. I don't know what happened to her. She's gone. It doesn't even say if it's the same year, if it's two years later. Robert Dahl, he's been studying the occult, he said, because of the events of part two. But we got Officer Kate. I like that, you know, it's Matt Cordell. He's, he feels bad for this officer because she's going through a similar thing that he went through, although she's technically not killed. He was killed in prison, but he was wrongly convicted. She's on a hospital bed. She got shot by this woman who... I don't know what the fuck was going on there. That pharmacy scene, we'll get into it. It's, it's stupid. I like that there's funny deaths. Every death in this movie is funny. It's not gory. None of these movies are gory at all, but the Kates in it, the, the Kates, the deaths in this movie are pretty funny. And Dahl always has something like romantic or witty or clever to say almost every scene. And then that, that music kicks in and he's just got, you know he's about to say something funny or clever. And I just like that the humor is very subtle. It's not very slapsticky. It's not upfront. It's just very like subtle things that maybe weren't supposed to be funny, but you look at it and you're like, that's actually pretty funny. I was laughing quite a bit. And we got Paul Gleason and Robert Forster. Those are the two familiar faces that I saw. Paul Gleason, yeah, he was in Die Hard also. So we got two people from Die Hard in this film. Cons, there's no continuity. Where the fuck's Susan? They established that Kate is a crack shot. We got this whole scene where she's shooting the paper targets and she's awesome. And at one moment, she's talking about, like, a rapist, and she shoots the sheet right in the dick. You know, what did he do? He was a rapist. <laughs> shoots him right in the dick. Subtle little humor like that. I like it. But then, when it's convenient, she's a horrible shot. She can shoot this guy through, like, the window, but she decides to just barge in and fall 20 feet and then try to shoot the person. It's like, I thought you had a great aim. What happened? And I'm just not buying this whole story of how she was framed. Like... The Jackie Earl Haley, he's in this, aka Freddy Krueger in the remake. He shoots two cops, I'm pretty sure they're dead, and they somehow spin the story where he's the victim and this cop's crazy. I'm not buying it. And his whole character, his purpose, is just to set her up, like to these two cameramen. Like, they don't utilize these characters that well. They just kind of go nowhere, and it's all about the maniac cop protecting Kate's innocence, like trying to clear her name. But the way they do it, it just doesn't work. It's just a messy story. Like, you don't even know Cordell's motivation until it's, like, almost over. You're like, oh, so this is what he's doing. Well, why did that guy bring him back? This didn't happen until afterwards. And, yeah, this movie it has a slower pace. Cordell, he doesn't kill until 30 minutes in. The first 30 minutes is kind of, like, spliced with just shots of him walking through the city. He's walking over here. He's walking down the street. He's under the bridge. And, meanwhile, all this other shit's happening. And then finally, he gets to the person who resurrects him 30 minutes in, and we don't get any explanation about why. She's like, yep, I brought you back. And he kind of says, like, you know, it's crazy out there, injustice. And it's like, yeah, but 
that's why you brought him back? Just for any random case that pops up? There was no personal reason to bring him back. And you know, like, how did he know Cordell? Well, I just, there's things I want to know. And then coincidentally, the church that this voodoo guy is at, this voodoo priest, the tunnels underneath it go straight to the hospital that Kate's at in a coma. Just a weird coincidence that didn't need to be here. Like, Cordell, he's an unstoppable machine. He's a zombie, basically. He can just walk into the hospital. We don't need this easy fucking excuse for him to get into the hospital. It's just dumb. So yeah, the story, the narrative, once again, like the first two, it's just messy. You just, you don't care. There's no great characters, no character buildups. This movie does that typical thing where no matter how many times they shoot the villain, they think, if I just shoot him one more time, this will do it. Even like Robert Dahl, the actor's name, Dahl, is that? Robert, the guy, he just keeps shooting him throughout the whole movie. It's like, learn that he cannot die that way. And it's just ridiculous. They just keep shooting him. There's no boobs. There's no gore. It's, 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 the story sucks. You got two different love stories going on. You got Robert Dahl and this other girl uh, that's a nurse. That goes really... I, I'm not interested in that. And then you got Matt Cordell who's in love. It looks like he's in love with her. Why would he be protect? I guess because they got something in common now. But it seems like there's some love there. Like there's a connection. And even she's having a dream. What does that mean? Like, was that her dreaming? Is there some weird paranormal shit going on where he forced a dream into her head? I don't get that at all. She's in a coma and she's having a, a wedding dream where she's marrying Matt Cordell. And then it just ends and it's like, I don't know. That There's just things in here that make no sense to me. All right, spoilers. This movie has an opening text. And then they have a quick part two recap. And he gets brought back to life by the voodoo chant. So that explains the end of part two. Like, oh, that's how he came back. So they, they at least acknowledge part two in some way. I mean, you got Robert Dahl who comes back. And then you get the pharmacy scene. This cop has an SMG that is not standard issue at all. That's illegal. You got Jackie Earl Haley who is like robbing this pharmacy. But then by the end of that scene, the cashier who's a hostage was actually his girlfriend who buzzed Jackie Earl Haley in to rob it. Like if they would have shown that there was a second clerk there, like the boss who was dead, it would have made more sense. I'd be like, oh, so he broke in. She let him in, but then he got a little crazy and killed the boss, and that's why the cops are there. If she was letting him in to take drugs, why would she phone the police to get there unless she's just a crazy bitch who wants her boyfriend to end up murdering people? It's just dumb. It's so fucking dumb. But yeah, then there's fake news. There's fake news. They're, they're saying that Kate shot that woman and Jackie Earl Haley in cold blood. Bullshit. And I'm pretty sure she shot Jackie Earl Haley in his face and he somehow survives. And he even says like, I'm immortal. So that was a line that made me think, oh, maybe he's part of this voodoo thing. Maybe he was brought back to life, but then that goes nowhere and it's never revealed. I guess he didn't get shot in the head. Just very confusing shit, man. I, what the hell? It's all over. Was he immortal? Was he not? He dies at the end, so I guess not, but... What was that line for? I'm immortal. And then he survives a head shot wound, but then he dies at the end and he's used for nothing other than getting Kate set up, which was really just the fucking two reporters fault and how they got there. I don't know. I guess if you get shot in the chest, you can become brain dead. I, I don't know. I'm not a surgeon, but she becomes brain dead, comatose because it's convenient for the plot. And then shoots. <laughs> I love. And then. Matt Cordell, he, he just knows about it and he arrives at the hospital and there's a heckler outside, picks him up, throws him in the air and then shoots him a bunch of times like a flying disc. Thought that was funny. There's some cool funny deaths in this movie. He even takes shock paddles and chases the dick doctor all the way up to the roof and he just shocks him to death. Shocks the metal handlebars that he's holding on to. Thought that was cool. And then he x-rays the other doctor to death played by uh, Robert Forster. You get, the, you see the aftermath, his head's like baking and melting like he was like in a microwave. Thought that was cool. And his character was a dick doctor, the way he just comes in, he's like quickly like diagnosing everybody in like two seconds, like hit it with 50 cc's of this and do this. All right, just put a bandaid on that and like just done, 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 done. Like that's the type of doctor he is. Like let's just quickly get these people out of here. Whoa, sweetheart, tie off that femoral there. He could lose the leg. He already has, as far as I'm concerned. What's on your mind? How are we doing? 
BP dropping, going into VTAC. 50 cc's Digitox, be prepared with those paddles. But yeah, then we get the dream sequence that makes no fucking sense. And then Dr. Myers gets kind of link, does kind of lingus, there's kind of lingus in this movie. The guy's going down on the woman. We don't see that too often in horror movies. And then he kills those stupid ass reporters off camera. <laughs> off camera, because they're cameramen. It's just a lame death. There's no gore in here. Oh yeah, Cordell, he goes into the hospital to, f he shoots a couple of cops. It's so easy to kill people at this hospital and no one ever hears gunfire. No one's like rushing to like, what's going on ever? And then Robert Dahl just pops up on a gurney. I'm like, where did he come from? How did he know this was happening? But yeah, uh, Cordell, he comes in to basically frame Jackie Earl Haley. He lets him go. And I'm like, oh, so this is what they're using him for to frame him. But that goes nowhere because boom, he's dead. He goes out in the hall, he shoots his lawyer and this other person and he's like, oh shit, I just shot my lawyer. And her, the lawyer is a fucking, she deserved it. She's one of those lawyers who's like, I want this, this, and this for my psycho client. He's gonna get it. And he's like, fuck you bitch, you're defending a heartless, soulless criminal. Those people just deserve to die. People who willingly defend pieces of shits for money. No soul, awful people. But yeah, he, he kills her, and then his buddy that's also psycho getting released, he's like, oh well, they're free, you can get another lawyer. But yeah, then Cordell, he wants Kate to be resurrected just like him, but Kate's soul won't allow it. So then Cordell shoots the black guy who resurrected him, the priest, because he's no longer needed. So boom, get rid of that character. And there's like all these things not explored in the movie. The script, the writing, it's awful. It's like... I want to know more about this shit, like the symbols. They bring up these symbols once and they barely explore it. It's a symbol of injustice. Okay, tell me more. We got stuffed chickens down the heads, the neck holes, and it's just weird shit that does nothing. I feel like this movie is trying to be more complicated than it needs to be. Just resurrect him for a specific, easy reason and didn't just have him kill people because that's what we're here to see. But it's just, obviously they didn't know what the fuck they were doing. This is just, like I said, it's still better than part one. That movie was boring. This one's somewhat boring, but there's some entertainment and cheesiness to it that I enjoy. Speaking of which, we get a fire stunt where Matt Cordell is on fire and he's driving his car for miles and miles on fire. The fire just won't go out, even though all the windows are down. I think the window, the windshield was broken open, especially after all the crashes, but all that wind's not taking the fire out. He's just permanently on fire and then he gets killed like the shark and jaws Robert Dahl he takes an oxygen tank throws it in the back seat and it gets lit on fire and blows up Cordell the end but wait there's more we got that evil lives on Andy he's on the gurney next to Kate's charred body and he just grabs her hand because he loves her and then then it's over but yeah this movie wasn't that great it, I can see why people hate it it's definitely weird it's all over the place the script the writing the story the narrative it's not that good. The characters aren't that great. Although I think Robert, the main actor in this movie, he's really what saved it for me. I thought he was way better in this than part two. He was actually focused on a lot more. He really carried the film for me. A lot of his humor, the funny deaths, they weren't gory, but they were funny. So at the end of the day, I gotta say when it comes to Maniac Cop 3, this one's definitely not the best, but I don't think it's the worst like most people. So if you like two, this is definitely worth checking out at Redbox. And those are my thoughts on Maniac Cop 3. I'm done with this trilogy. I don't have to talk about it no more. What are your thoughts on this trilogy as a whole? Put your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Hit this like button and you can subscribe today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds. And until next time, I'll feed you soon.